Hi, this is a bit of an overview of the picture frame project that you're going to be working on. Uh, it is helpful to model this stuff out in 3D to get an idea of what the dimensions should be and to help you figure out what your plans should look like. Your stock is going to be a 4x2 piece of stock and uh, that four inches of width you want to take conservatively by the time you joint it down and sand it and cut from it you're not going to have a full four inches so uh, your picture frame you're going to want to rip this thing down and you're not going to have that picture frame as wide as two inches but we'll look at that in a second uh, the height of the thing should be about three quarters of an inch that is the thickness of the stock we'll plane it down to that and that gives you the most stock that you can use on the router table to give it some nice, nice uh, ornate grooves and bevels and stuff you also will get three pieces of material, well two pieces of material and then you provide your own photo. The photo is going to be a 5x7, it's a good size for this project. The backing board will also be 5x7 and it's going to be an eighth of an inch thick. And then we'll supply glass that's also going to be 5x7 and an eighth of, an eighth of an inch thick. And so what we want to do is design that frame so it's going to accommodate these three pieces all sandwiched together and held in place with little darts. So let's start designing this frame uh, from the basics to figure out what the dimension should be. 5 by 7 is about the starting place for all of this thing and I'm going to make a 5 by 7, 5 comma 7, um, just rectangle to begin with and figure this picture frame is going to extend out from that 5 by 7 by some dimension that is not going to be as much as 2 inches but it still leaves a little room for an overlap. you get the idea in a second. This tool here, the offset tool, is going to help a lot. First of all, we are going to want to have an inset on this by a quarter of an inch. That is, the wood is going to cover over top the glass and the, and the uh, little sandwich uh, photo and everything. It's going to hover over top of that so that this backing board will hold it in place and not pop it through the front. So we've just used up a quarter of an inch. Now, if we pull this thing to the outside, we know we can't get uh, two inches out of this. So let's assume we get a next even number down, one 0.75 inches. If we've already used a quarter of that for the inset, that gives us 1.5 inches left over. So we could make a frame that looks something like this. Just to make the, try to make this clear, the wood is going to be one and three quarter inches in width, so we have um, not quite used up the full two inches, the half of that, because we won't get away with it. We have a quarter of an inch of an offset here, it's a terrible way to see it, but you get the idea. And so what's left over here from the outside edge from here to here is going to be one and a half inches. And that should do a nice job. Now here's where things work out to nice even numbers. If you look at the dimensions we have left over, the outside edge is going to be 10 inches tall and 8 inches across. So this is a winning set of dimensions and we should try to follow this as close as we can to try to get the best results. So we will need one and three quarter inches out of this stock and looking at it one and three quarter inches is going to be fairly generous from here to here Oops. No, let's try it. let's try it elsewhere here from here to here uh, there's your one and three quarter inches so we can easily get that out of this stock and we'd actually have enough left over for waste a half an inch left over as waste and that like I say that'll go with sanding and jointing so, uh, so next, in, in putting this frame together, I would strongly suggest you start to model the thing in three dimensions. It's not too hard to do. Okay, I'll get rid of those dimensions so it's not quite as confusing. We'll want to pull this thing up it by, by the three quarters of an inch. I guess we don't need this thing in the middle because that won't exist. There's what our stock is going to look like. And there's how the picture is going to show through it. So let's pull it up in three dimensions now. If we pull this up by three quarters of an inch, that's the thickness of the stock, same as what's coming out of there. And then let's pull this thing up so it meets it, like that. And if we go underneath here and take a look at what's happened, we can actually model this thing a little more accurately. And I'm going to do a little trick and hide this stuff. I've got something on called the outliner. The outliner here lets you name and compose and see all these little bits and pieces. So I'm going to start hiding these things. And you can see you can get them back very easily later on, but I just want to get this stuff out of the way. So that's the outliner that lets me hide that sort of stuff. And I'd like to bring back this edge. We've lost some faces here. And I think I can do that just by drawing a couple of lines or edges where they belong. Oh, there it is. 
So I now have that back in place. So now we got to think about how much we have to route this thing or put a rabbit cut into the thing so we can hold that glass in place. And if it was an eighth of an inch of glass, an eighth of an inch of backing, that's a quarter of an inch. And you're wise to add another quarter of an inch just for safety so it's recessed nicely in there. So I'm going to take this edge and if I, if I rabbit it up by half an inch, it'll take it all the way to there. Leave a little bit of lip around the outside, but lots of room in there for the glass, the photo, and the backing. And then Steve still leave a little bit of a reset, recess in there so that darts and things can hold the thing in place. So that's kind of the look that we want to have for the thing. I'm going to erase some of these lines because from the outside you won't necessarily see that, or that, or that, or that. So there's the basics of what the frame should look like. And you'd be really wise to keep track of all of those dimensions um, and put them into a 2D set of plans. So once again, we have just recessed this thing so that, I wonder if these dimensions will work properly for me. We have a half inch rabbit that's been cut out of this thing. And again, this dimension here, from there to there, is a quarter of an inch. No, nope, not three-eighths of an inch. I want a quarter inch. It's not going to show it to me. But a quarter, a quarter of an inch overlap or inset to hold everything in place. Now, that doesn't start to describe what happens with the bevels and all that sort of thing. And there's lots of different designs that you can try. Something that works rather well is a Roman OG. Let's see if I can pull this one off. First of all, I'm going to take some measurements here. I'm going to measure this thing by, say, a half inch here and a half inch here. I guess I could pull it off this way too. Hang on. There's some guidelines for us to follow. And um, if I were trying to do a Roman OG, I might try a couple of sets of curves. Maybe I'll draw some more lines in here though. Again, I like going with really nice, easy numbers. Quarter inch, half inch. Okay. So a Roman OG is just a, set, a couple of sets of curves. Nice, easy tangents to this thing. So if I click it like this and say I'd like it to curve something like that, and this one to go something like that, That gives me that nice Roman OG look all the way around the outside. Now, I'll try using the Follow Me tool to impose this thing so it looks a little cleaner too. Hopefully this will give me what I'm looking for. So I'm going to pre-select these edges, that one, that one, that one, and that one, and see if I can then use the Follow Me tool to give me the look I'm looking for. Almost. You get the idea though, that's what's going to create that nice bevel look all the way around the outside. And if I failed at that, I guess I better be a little more careful in selecting those edges. Try one more time. One, two, three, four. And what I was missing was, I guess I got to get this last edge in there too. Now with the follow me tool, clicking this, ah uh, yeah. So you get the idea how you can start to sculpt this thing out and give it a very exact and precise look and model the thing in three dimensions. By the time this is all done, you can draw those lines like that. Whoops. That'll show how the frame is ultimately going to look, and that's going to give you everything you want. There's lots more that can take place. You can put a, I would suggest, a dado in the middle of this thing. We'll create what looks like a little bit of a lip here and here. Just keep in mind, you've got a limited number uh, amount of depth to deal with here. And again, having a 3D model lets you see pretty carefully, precisely, how much more depth you have to deal with. If you brought something down by an eighth of an inch, you'd still have a little bit of a lip, but be careful with it. Do some examination, see what you can get and see if you can get the exact dimensions that you're going to need for your 2D plants. Good luck!